So, when looking to buy a video camera for your first video projects, you obviously need to look at what your budget is and see what features you can get. Here we have a prosumer camera, which is higher end than what we're about to go over, but it's got the features that we can use for reference. Now, the first thing I want to instill in you is the sense that the camera is only one part of the equation. Don't spend all you've got on just the camera. You also need to get a good tripod, microphone, filters, cards, batteries, and such. So keep that in mind, but for this video, we're going to go over just the camera part. Now, say you've got a smaller budget, say in the $1,000 or less range. You won't be getting anything fancy, but you can still get some great images. But you got to see what you can get for it. So here are a th few things to consider. I highly recommend getting a camera with a focus ring. Some cameras have, you know, manual focus on a touch screen, and that's just wrong. Uh, physical focus ring is invaluable. Next is audio. You must have some sort of mic input. In this range, you won't get XLR, but it will usually be a headphone style, like eighth inch kind of jack. That's fine, as long as it has it, so you can plug in a higher quality mic. Next are buttons. I love me some buttons. I hate me some touchscreen. The more you rely on a touchscreen and menus, the slower you're gonna go. Trust me, you, you want physical buttons. They're much more easier access. Now let's step backwards a tad, because we skip sensors, which are very important. They're the heart of the camera. But I only mention them now because in this price range, there's not much to say other than get as big as you can get, you know, which is going to be about a third of an inch at most. They're all pretty small and won't get you anything remarkable in low light. Instead, focus on the reviews people make. I never buy a camera just based on its specs. There are a lot of sites around the net which people post reviews. So look at those reviews and see what the average Joe thinks of the camera. If 100 people say it's a terrible camera, then you probably shouldn't buy it. Next up is what recording format and media it uses. Mini DV is still around, but a lot are moving towards hard drives and flash media. The hard drives are nice, but I still don't trust them much because if that internal drive dies, it's off to the repair shop. I would lean instead towards flash media because it's removable and you can buy a nice reliable card. I could talk better, uh, I could talk bit rates and codecs, but again, I look at the user reviews because even if everything looks great on paper, it can still be a junker. Each camera may use a different codec, or even if they use the same codec, it may be tuned differently. So a higher bitrate camera may even perform worse than a lower bitrate camera. Other than that, um, it's really nice to have manual control over, you know, uh, aperture, gain, shutter speed, white balance. Those are really, really important tools to have. You may or maybe not be able to find all of that stuff in a lower budget camera but you know, try and find them and keep those in mind. And those are the priorities that you should be looking at when you're buying a lower budget camera for your first you know, film or documentary, whatever you may be doing. Um, but yeah, take a look at those, keep on shooting, and don't forget to accessorize, properly praying your shoot, and of course, keep on learning. Darren Levine, MediaHell.com.